WEMF, presented by the Sound Museum Boston. Welcome to the show, The Young Jerks, only on WEMFradio.com. Weekly, every Saturday at 6 p.m., my name is Mike Can, And it's just The Young Jerk today, because Frank Capone is on vacation, on a family vacation with his son and his wife. Hope they're having fun, Sarah. Or is it his girlfriend? I don't, I'm not sure, but I call it his wife because they are basically husband and wife with their child, Benny. So I hope they're having fun. Maybe Frankie will call in today. We'll see. 617-500-7100 is the number, Frankie, if you forgot it. And uh, we're just following the uh, the Outlaw Roadshow, who just a phenomenal, great show to follow every week with the local music going Fun, fun time. Great music this week. I could hear it in the green room. It was definitely a good musical performance in here on WEMF Radio. We bring you local music. We also bring you local talk and local politics and local news. And today, we're going to get into something a little bit different, a new story that's been happening for a while that uh, I've noticed, and uh, a new story on this show, The Young Jerks, because, you know, we we cover all types of stories. It's... uh, Market Basket, Save Market Basket. It's uh, all about the employees today. Hopefully we're going to hear from the employees of Market Basket. I grew up uh, on the North Shore and actually worked at Shaw's and wished I worked at Market Basket. A lot of my friends uh, that I grew up with did work at Market Basket, and some of them still work there like 20 years later. And they've always been happy, and uh, I guess they're upset from what I hear because their beloved CEO, RDT Demoulis, was recently fired. And Market Basket, if you don't know, if you're you know a listener of ours outside of uh, Massachusetts, New England area, it's been the employer that paid well, had low cost for customers, and fed a lot of people at a cheap price. It was a great place to shop, has been a great place to shop. Uh, you get more for your dollar, and you really did when you go there. I'm a, I'm a huge customer. I go there all the time. And I've decided with a lot of the other customers' employees, I think, right now, uh, to not shop there anymore. I'm going to boycott. That's what I'm calling today. And uh, I have some strong opinions about this, this market basket. But more than that, I want to hear from the employees. I know that I've contacted a lot of employees online on Facebook on their group. You should check it out, Save RDT, RDT and Save Market Basket. And they have strong opinions, and they're posting a lot of good stuff. There was a big rally yesterday. In Tewksbury, at Market Basket headquarters, about 2,500 people showed up, a lot of employees, a lot of great speeches, a lot of media coverage. Um, the new CEOs, uh, we'll call them Thornton and Gooch, that's their last names, they put out a couple letters. Uh, one of them told employees that if they miss work, they would be fired. Uh, the second was an open letter in the Boston Globe today that they paid for, and they basically blamed their employees for the situation, which is... Uh, completely bankrupt and tone deaf when when you look at the situation right now management the warehouse the front end workers the lowest workers the part time workers they're all united for this RDT to come back they're all united in this one demand they want their CEO back and can you imagine any other company out there would be so excited to have their employees all excited to have their boss and this, this corporation just doesn't seem to get it, and the customers are now boycotting. Um, there seems to be some shortages at Market Basket. We, you know, this is a breaking story right now. There's a lot of information, a lot of pictures online, a lot of video. We're going to get into it all today. Hopefully, we hear a lot of callers as well. Um, following us is Smoking in the Girls' Room with uh, Carmelita. She's also going to be covering the story today. So if you're a Market Basket employee, Listen in, pass it around, tell people to listen to WEMF Radio. We're going to take a quick break. Hopefully we're going to play a clip from the big rally yesterday at Market Basket. And then we're going to start taking some calls. Um, I know I've been taught, speaking to a gentleman named Dan the Man, who's posted several very, very cool pictures from what's going on. He's an employee at Market Basket. I'm expecting him to call in and some other employees from Market Basket. And if you're an employee or a customer of Mac Market Basket, we want to hear from you today. Please do call 617-500-7100 is the number. We're going to take a break. We're going to come we're going to play a little bit of music, maybe one song of music. We're going to play the audio clip from the rally that just happened yesterday at Market Basket headquarters. And then when we're hopefully going to come back and speak to some Market Basket employees and customers and family and friends 
anyone that supports Market Basket, or if you're an employee and you're concerned about the situation, you're worried about losing your job, even if you don't support the rally, if you don't support what's going on, we want to hear from you, too. We want to hear from all sides. So give us a call, 617-500-7100. If you haven't listened to the show before, WEMF Radio, we're here every Saturday at 6 p.m. Like us on Facebook, The Young Jerks. My name is Mike K. and we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back. They want to split us and divide us and pick us off. We cannot allow that. We have to stand together until, for as long as it takes, and I guarantee you it's not going to take a week. But we keep these warehouses shut, shut down. Woo-hoo! Warehouse employees, you guys are great. Woo-hoo! And I'll go so far as to make sure that when this is over, you guys are all made whole again. Truck drivers, we need you more than anything right now. We need every member of this family. You've got to realize that every little piece of this family works together like a puzzle. Everybody's important. If we stick together, we will win. If we don't stick together, we will lose. Thank you for coming. God bless all of you. We are back, the Young Jerks, on WEMF Radio. Dot com. That was Tupac with, uh, yeah, we, um, actually, you know what, I just want to, before we uh, announce, get back to the music, I believe that was also Charlie Chaplin speaking on that, but uh, we're, we've been taking calls, and I know a lot of people are calling in. I think we have a, a technical issue where anyone that's calling in, you can hear the blip blip, so we're going to ask people not to call right now. Hopefully you're listening. I know we're supposed to get a lot of calls on the show today, because we do have someone on the line right now. His name is Dan the Man. He's on Facebook. He's posted a few pictures. Dan, welcome to the show. Are you still there, Dan? Yeah, I'm sitting here. You're a Market Basket employee, is that correct? Correct. Where Where do you work? I work at Store 15 in Havel. And what is going on? Like, what uh, What do you think about all of this, and why are the employees up in arms right now at Market Basket? Um, well, right now it's a big mess. Um. All stores are refusing any trucks that come to the store right now because as of Thursday afternoon after the rally in Tuxbury that happened, um, Felicia Thornton and Jim Gooch hired um, about 100 to 200 scab drivers. Scabs. Drive. Yeah, they are scab scabs. Drivers. Yeah. They are scabs. They are scabs. To drive the trucks to the stores, and, uh, and they they yeah. have no idea of where they're going or what to do because I'm seeing videos on the Save After T and Market Basket Facebook page. They're just driving into the stores and just like going around the building. Yeah, and they're like knocking over signs. They've got uh, almost risking people's lives, pulling off yes, with people in the back. It's like what they exactly. don't even know what one, they're doing. Unlicensed, one not of the OSHA. Stores, one of the stores actually had that problem. Uh, there was a truck that was backed up to the receiving dock. There was a metal plate that they used to unload the trucks, and there was an employee on the trailer. Well, I guess the the driver didn't know the door was shut, took off, the plate fell onto the ground, and the employee had to jump from the truck to the dock to be safe. And so these these new CEOs are risking people's lives um, to deliver the goods through these scab drivers because their employees won't work for them right now because of this situation. Why are the employees, what do they want? What is the one thing that the employees want right now? The one thing that the employees want is they want Arthur T to come back as CEO. Who was just fired. Company. Who and why? He was just fired back in June. Uh, back in June, he was just fired. And why is that? Why do they want him back? Because they don't like the way the, the Arthur S and uh, Future Thornton and Jim Gooch are running things right now. I could see why with the letter that they posted in the Boston Globe. I mean, that was, it, it just, wow. That's where you spent your money, to put that letter to insult your employees. Instead of actually acknowledging that, that there's a situation right now and that your employees have some valid concerns, that your employees are united, that you have, you know, Market Basket has a special thing where 
people I know that I grew up with started working there at age 16. I wor- I started working at Shaw's at age, six- at age 16. I no longer work at Shaw's. I didn't last nearly as long as my friends did that started working at Mar- Market Basket at the same time. They still work there. There are people that have been working there so many 20, 30, 40 years, families. And there's a reason why. And uh, it seems yeah. like more recently, Market Basket has even become more so. Like it's, it's become a thing where in this bad economy, working class people can go and actually feed themselves with because you really do get more for your dollar. When I've had tough times myself, that's the place I go shop. It's my number one place. I love Market Basket because of all these reasons. And it's it's threatened. It is definitely threatened. You can feel it. You can feel with what happened and who they put in charge. If you look into these uh, two CEOs, who they are, what they've done in the past, their histories, and you can feel it among the employees. I could see it on these websites. I could see what you're all yeah. doing. I love you. Thank you, Dan. And, the we're, man. and we're afraid that Felicia and Gooch is going to do what they did to their companies is put us into the ground. Put, us, put you what, into the ground. That's exactly that's it. What, yeah. That's what we're afraid of. That's what they're going to do to us. Since they did, that's what they did to their company. They're going to do to us, put us right into the ground. And there's a history of this in corporate America. This is what happens over and over and over again. We see it all the time. And we don't want Market Basket to go down. The employees are united. This is this is historic, a special time. 2,500 people showed up yesterday on a Friday, on a work day. It was amazing how much media got. The employees from the management to the warehouse guys, to the front end, to the bakery, to the deli managers. It's an amazing thing that is happening. Well, um, what can you tell us about the stores, like in Haverhill right now? What is going on? Uh, is is the food being restocked? Are they running out of things? Are, they, do, are there less customers there? Is the boycott taking effect? What um, do you see? Right now, we are basically running out of product to sell. We don't have anything right now. Because the, the last truck that we got in at my store was... Wednesday, and we're being told that we're not getting any shipments in to any of the stores until further notice, because all three warehouses are locked up. What happens if you get one of these uh, scab truckloads? Will you accept it? What are you going to do? We had to contact a manager of any department, any red coats. They will come out, and they will tell us to refuse the truck because it's not right. You know, they're doing it all wrong. Yep, for the safety. You're supposed to have, you're supposed to have paperwork saying what's on the truck, and you're supposed to have the truck locked or with, sealed. Well, at one of the other stores, I think it was Rally, they got a truck, I think it was today, and that truck had no paperwork on it and no seal on the truck. So they didn't accept that truck. They told that truck to take off. Exactly. That's good. That's good. It's good to hear. Thank you for this but information, some, this news. Some, some of the other stores, they are taking the truck, but they're not knowing what's going on to, all together. Absolutely. And I just found out today that there is going to be another rally at the Tuxbury Warehouse on Monday. On Monday. Same time, early, be, all day? I think it's going to be the same time, but I'm not sure. Excellent. Well, I appreciate your call, and uh, we hope to get more callers, more employees calling in. I really appreciate that you called in today, Dan the Man, and keep us updated. Uh, keep posting on our Facebook pages, and, and uh, Save RDT we will be looking for you there, too, on those group pages. And um, well, actually, before I let you go, are you still there? Yes, I am. What do you say to customers like myself that are out there, longtime customers, Market Basket is my number one grocery store. I shop in Somerville and New Hampshire. Should I be boycotting? What Should we be boycotting as customers? As customers, see, it's tough for us, for employees to tell customers what to say because we really don't know the answer. It's all up to headquarters. But if, you know, if I was a customer and I shopped at Market Basket and I saw what was going on, I would probably take my business somewhere else until Market Basket gets just taken care of. That's what I feel. I feel like we all have to do that until Market Basket doesn't put out an ad and the Boston Globe spending wasting money, a lot of money, and the Boston Globe making themselves look bad and attacking the employees. They should be finding ways to talk to the employees right now and find out what the employees want and how they can actually figure this out 
Instead, they're doing just the opposite, which is disgusting. Right. Um, and I, I know Felicia and Gucci's email address are not up anymore. They took them down. Yeah, I'm sure they've gotten uh, a, a torrent of, of criticism and emails, and it's good. So this is special. I, I really thank you so much, and I hope you keep listening. And uh, w- thank you, Dan. Yep, I'll keep you guys posted. Awesome. You're listening to WEMF Radio. We're live on WEMF Radio. You can also listen to us a bunch of different ways if you don't know, but you can uh, uh, you can listen on Shoutcast. You can also listen to us on the TuneIn app on smart devices. My name is Mike Can. This is the Young Jerk Show. We're taking phone calls, 617-500-7100. We, we, yeah, we got another call. We'll take your call right now. Hello, who's calling? This is Mary Jacoby. I Hi. talked to Mike earlier. He told me to call in. Hey, Mary, it sounds like you have a little background. Do you have, like, a TV going or something back there? Yeah, i got to turn everything down now. All right. So sorry. It. Hold on. I just booted up. Awesome. I feel like Dan Ray on Nightside. Do you have a listen to his show on WBZ? No, I'm a little <laughs> bit of a shut in lately. Let me just let me turn off the sound on that for you. Yeah, you better, because he gets mad when. That's what I do. I'm gonna act like him today. But um, okay. <laughs> you, there you go. You're a market basket customer, is that correct? Because I did talk to you on yeah. Facebook, right? Yes, and I started a position on the on the save, Audi page. You started a petition. I met you today there, and I. I I started a petition. I went to you know the petition site to start one, and I started one, and um, immediately you know like 16 people shared it and signed it and shared it, and so it's going around. And I'll be up late tonight, and I'll make sure that it's going around. Um, I'm a third generation customer. My grandmother, my mother, my sister, I shop there, and my niece, my niece, so she's fourth generation. And it, I lived in Chelmsford, where the Dwoolis family lived. And um, I remember, you know, the business was just, I remember it from 1968. And I just can't believe, I knew that this, they wanted to take uh, this away from Adi years ago, but I did, I had no idea that this was still going on. And this is like, since he spread out and I just can't shop anywhere else. I can't shop anywhere else. If you go anywhere else, it's like the price is ridiculous because all they do is spend their money to buy new brick front and whatever, every 10 years, Shaw's remodels or Hannaford or whatever. And Artie never did that. He just made the stores bigger to accommodate more people because more people needed to shop there. I know, right? And he's so charitable and such like you, you hear the stories because this is what got me is I started going on the page to save RDT. I didn't really know what was going on. And then I start seeing the testimonials from people who used to work there or had family members that worked there about what he did and what he's done for them and that this was their time to give back to him. And they want him back. It's like you ask them, oh, are you interested in union? No. Uh, we want our boss back. That's what this is all about. It's Right, it's a, it's and that's a, why... Go ahead, Mary. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... No, no, go that. ahead. That's why, I mean, I started the petition um, so, that, you know, so that we can have one presently because I just bombarded the governor with, with all of, all the stuff that was being posted and saying, he said yesterday that he had children coming into this state. And if you look at the map on the WBZ broadcast last night, I mean, you know, if the state... Yeah, the federal government is going to have, you know, the state feed these kids. Well, they're going to get much better, uh, <laughs> much better deal feeding them if they go to market basket. Yeah, everyone does. And, yeah, everyone does. I mean, that's and, the problem. Is, as I'm looking at it, now, I'm going to not have, I'm going to, you know, I'm heading out today to get some food. I'm going to be going to Shaw's. I want to go to I market know. basket, but I won't. You know, it's, 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 uh, I, is, you know, is, I, is all I your family not, on that level? Are you all boycotting, Mary? My, I, I am getting the word out to my family. They were up at the beach. I'm, they're coming back. So they won't be shopping until tomorrow or the next day. So I'm getting the word out tonight um, to them because we're all market basket people. We always have been. My father was legally blind before, before he passed away some years back. He could go to market basket. He could go, I could let him go through market basket and be fine. If you took him to another store, he would not know what to do. Yeah, you, you, know, you walk into any market basket, they're all set up the same way. Yes, and you can find your way around. And if not, there's somebody there to help you. There's a real person there to help you. You know, um, 
I personally, I have a hard time getting up um, to the second floor. I tell them I have to put in my little basket. I'm getting to be an old lady now. And I said, you know, I go in there. They double bag heavy stuff. They, uh, they, 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 I put it on the counter the way they, and they, they, they do it. If you try to go run in to get anything else anywhere, they don't do it. It's terrible. You're caught in the rain. Your stuff is falling out of the bags. They're really, really nice there. And I just, I mean, this is close to me because I'm from Chelmsford. And so is, so is Ari. And originally, and I really feel, I really feel, I, mean, I saw this building up. I never even knew, though, until I saw WV's news, how many locations there were. But I can tell you that you can get two orders at Market Basket, and they were running the discount, and they know times are hard, and they're running the discount. You can get two orders there for, I mean, I, my jaw dropped. For one, and that's it, because, you know, this is, the, the employees are also recognizing this, too, is that, you know, Arthur T., RDT, the one that they're rallying yep. behind. He kept the prices low for working class people. He he gave us an option to get lower price food, at, you know, a good food at a lower price. And yeah. he also gave people good wages with good benefits and bonuses and treated people like family. And they were number one, that you know, in New England. And, you know, it's an amazing story. And then they fired him over this family dispute. There's a family dispute about ownership. Yeah. Artie owns, RDT owns just under half of it. There's another cousin named Arthur S. They've fought for years. And RDT finally got fired, and people want him back. And, and uh, thank you. Thank you for calling in, Mary. It's uh, yeah, good to hear I from customers. Yeah, I behind this. I know on Monday, can you, somebody just tell me on Monday, they were just talking about the uh, – the Tewksbury location. I know the Tewksbury market best, but I don't know where the warehouse is. Do they have an address for that, or I'll just should I just check around? Um, I think it's online. It's uh, you know what we'll look that up definitely at the next break and and definitely find out where it's located Monday. I know it's because on the you, yeah. Hopefully someone posted up on the thread that we're on right now on the Save Audi page and uh, and uh, we'll find out right away because that's a good point, Mary. What are some of the best I, things before I let you go? What are some of the best things that you're seeing on the Save Audi page? Because there's been a lot of photos and videos, like in the last 24 hours since this protest. With uh, what what are some of the best things that you're seeing on there? I really like the letter uh, that Marnie wrote, um, the note, and. Um, you know, I, I really thought that the people, um, the people that are definitely keeping track of what's happening in each door, because they're getting involved and they're going out there to, to, to see what's happening at each door and, to, you know, to, you know, to talking about the trucks and what's happening, all that. Um, you know, that has, somebody has to really monitor that because, you know what, at this point, you know, and somebody mentioned this, at this point, if, the, if they're not going to do anything at this point, and there are some empty shelves and empty cases and all this stuff, or they don't know how to handle that food, the Board of Health is going to have to be called in. Yeah, the government. Like, that's the next thing, because we've got to talk about that today, too, is that there's a governor's race right now going on. We want to know. Yep. We want to know from the current governor, Deval Patrick, what how he feels about this. Can he help the, the, the workers? Will I, you stand with the workers, Deval? And same thing I, with the candidates for governor. Yes, I have bombard, bombarded his, the governor's page today. Good. And I told him, this is a human, I said, as you said, with kids coming into this state, this is not a political issue. This is a humanitarian issue. I said, so we've already, we're, we're backing you on that. I said, so please back us because yeah. this is all, this is like the fabric of, of Massachusetts. Yes, it is. Started. Yes, it is. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much all for right. calling in. You take care. Bye bye. You too. Bye now. We're the young jerks, and that was Mary calling in about Market Basket. Definitely a Market Basket supporter. She gets it. She was good today. Um, and she's boycotting. She's getting all her family members to boycott Market Basket over the way that they're treating their employees right now. We have another phone call. We're getting a lot of listeners. It's amazing. Let's take the phone call and see who's calling in right now. Hello. Are you there, listener, caller? Well, maybe we'll get another call. 617-500-7100 is the number. Uh, maybe we'll even take a break. We do have a lot of listeners right now. I've been kind of monitoring it on uh, some of the networks. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Hello. How you doing, listener? What's your name? Good. Good. Uh, my name is TJ. And where are you calling from, Peter? What's that? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from up in New Hampshire. And are you listening to the show? Uh, yeah, I'm listening to it right now. Yeah. What do you think? Do you work at Market Basket? You a customer? What, what do you think? What's going on? Yeah, I, I work at Market Basket, and uh, I actually I'm only I'm only 27 years old, um, and I started at the company when I was 16. 
uh, in New Hampshire, you know, that was that was a lot to get to get hired, you know, uh, get hired on with 16 years old. So, you know, first thing, you know, my father told me, get a job. If you're going to get a job, it's going to be at Market Basket. And I tell you, it was probably the best decision I ever made in my life because it's 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 made me grow as a person as well as, you know, I've learned just so much about the business. And I just, I can't believe that these people are trying to take this all away from us. Wow, uh, Peter. When I was six, well, how, what, when I was 16, you know, I, I started off, I started off as just a bag boy, just like everybody else. And, you know, now I've worked my way up through management and it's actually, it's, it's, it's working for me and I really enjoy my job and I love the people I work with. They're my family. They really are my family. And what do you think is going to happen here? Like what's your hope and what do you really think is going to happen? My hope is that Arthur Teeds and Willis ultimately prevails and he gets that seat back because, I mean, without him, we're sinking. We're sinking fast. Um, I mean, you, you've been watching the page all day today, and, uh, you know, you see, you see trucks driving down 93 with, with uh, nobody, nobody, nobody knowing what's going on. You've got trucks with uh, the back doors open. Yeah. Is heck no. You've got, you know, there's reports of uh, truck drivers just pulling away pulling away with the with people still on the trucks. I mean, it is an ocean nightmare. You could kill people. You know, and I mean I mean I mean they've they've done so much with us, working with us as employees, you know, about safety, 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 especially over the past couple of years, you know. I've learned so much and I mean how do these people not know what's going on? And then uh it's just it's just very tough um, you know, going to work every day and just, you know, not knowing, not knowing what the future is gonna bring. Um but like I said, I mean, I started as a bagger, and I, I'm an assistant produce manager now, and I can't think of any other place that I would rather be right now than Market Basket with my family. I'm loyal to them, and they're loyal to me, and they've always had my back from the get-go. And right now, are you willing to lose your job over this? I mean, has it come to that where are you guys going to lose your job if you don't accept these these deliveries? Well, it's it's got nothing to do with these deliveries. I've tried we've we've tried to punch our orders in, but you know what? Everything's locked out on us because nobody knows how to run this warehouse. Ah. The only people that know how to run this warehouse and drive these trucks are the people that have been with us for thirty, forty, there fifty some odd years. Exactly. It doesn't it does not make sense to bring two people from out of the state into into this into this and you, you hear us talk yeah. about culture, the culture of market yeah. basket, okay? You know, it is. It's a total culture. It's a life force, and it's a life force here in New England. Here in New England only, and we don't need anybody from the outside coming in. Awesome. Yeah, you're right, Peter. And it's good to hear exactly what you just said, because that's what I need. I need to hear the truth from someone who knows, and you do know. And I really appreciate you calling in. Do you want to lead, like, what do you want to add? I want to, like, is there something that you think should be talked about from what's going on on the Facebook pages or just what's happening right now? What, what do you, customers, what do, what, do, what do you got to bring out to us? Well, one thing that I really, really want to convey is I really want to convey something to the customers out there. If there's any customers listening, I just invite you guys to stay loyal. Stay loyal to us. Please, please stay loyal to us. That's all we want is your loyalty. We've been loyal to you for years and years and years and years now, and we just really need the customers to stand by our side. Um, and my name is actually TJ. Oh, um, TJ. What did I say? Yes. Peter, did I say? I, I got so many calls today. I'm sorry already. TJ. Thank yeah, you. TJ. <laughs> is it CJ or T? T is in Tom. T. T is in Tom. Tom. TJ. Yeah. And I, but um, what's that? I was going to ask you. You you said I think you said you were in New Hampshire. Yeah. What do you mind what saying? What city uh, you you're calling from or we're working at? Is that going to be um, a problem or not? I mean, I don't. Well, get... No, I'm I'm uh, I'm in Portsmouth right now. I live up in Portsmouth, and uh, I've worked all over the seacoast. I've worked in five or six stores now. So I mean, I've got customers. I have a customer base that that spreads over the entire seacoast of New Hampshire. You know, I've got regular customers that I see every. Almost every day. And, I mean, it, that's what it's all about. It's all about these people. It's all about these people, these customers that have been loyal to me for all these years. And I, I, don't, even think, I don't even think I could find another job that I would find a closeness, a closeness that I, that I have with these customers. You know, I, I, I've developed a repertoire with them, you know. I, I mean, you, you know about their families. You know about their kids. You know what their kids are doing. You know how their kids are doing in school. And, I mean, you don't get that anywhere else especially nowadays you just don't get that no it's so true and and that's what's making that's what is so special about what is happening right now it really is this is a special moment 
It's I, I say it's historic because you don't it's, see this. Well, this is this is our moment. We are market basket. Nobody else is market basket. We are market basket, and nobody else is going to ever be us. Absolutely. Nobody. You've seen all these chains come in, all these companies come in. Uh, the store that I'm working in right now, they opened up a brand new super duper Walmart down the street. Okay, I haven't felt any effects from it. Any. Absolutely. You know, it's you want to say you want to say, oh well, it's just gonna. You guys are going to bring the company down. No, the customers know better. Yeah. The customers know. They they know. Yes, they do. And and I and do. Every. I definitely know it. Thank you for calling in, TJ. We really uh, appreciate you calling in. Again, um, I'm with the employees, and we got some other uh, customers of yours coming in today. Um, some other hosts from the next show. Carmelita's here. Yes, I'm right here on mic. I, I hopped in on Mike's show early because uh, we're going to be having you. We're extending this into smoking in the girls' room coming up at 7 o'clock. This is, this is a big deal. These are our workers. This is, this is New England. Uh, you had mentioned a few moments ago, Mike, that it's historical. But when you look at the history of New England and you look at the history of organized labor in this country this much of it has started out of the new england states you also have detroit you have other states but new england is a, a revolutionary part of the country and our workers are smart they are they don't they don't put up with all that abuse and disrespect and especially where they have already those that have not experienced disrespect in the workplace but were nurtured by author T and now they're getting bumped out of that that realm, they're gonna stand up. This is That's again, this is New England. This is this is who we are. And we also have Valerie Maltas here too. Say hello Valerie. Oh. <laughs> I can't quite hear uh, two of those mics. I don't, I don't is know. This is Mike on? Yeah. Is that mic on? Is it on? Is it on? I hope so. I think yeah. it is. All right. I now it is. Hi, everybody. I'm early, too. <laughs> yes. And uh, we also have another phone call. We've had a lot of phone calls. I think That's hopefully great. they're still there. Are you on the line, listener? Maybe we might have lost them. Uh-oh. Sorry. We have people calling in and out. And uh, do we? Have, yeah, we have another caller. Hello, listener. Hi. Who? What's your name and why are you calling? My name is Sean. I'm from Wilmington. I work in Market Basket. Awesome. Well, tell us about what you think about what's going on and, and why. what's up with the workers. What, why did you protest? Why? What's going on? Tell us, Sean. So, okay. So I've been at Market Basket for six years now in June. Um, I was 14 when I started. I'm only 20. Um, basically, my parents forced me to get a job and thought I would regret it. But I've met some of the best people that I, in my entire life there, um, whether it's customers uh, employees, there's just amazing people that work there, and part of that is Mr. Demos, um, R.E.T. Demos. He's always been a fixture in that company, and everything we do revolves around him appreciating it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's basically how we, you know, run that company as a whole. We know our customers. We know what they want. We know who they are. Um, I heard a caller earlier say, you know, um, we, you know, we know when they're coming in, we know their families, we know stuff like that, and we pay attention to that stuff, and it's all because of Mr. DeMoore's, that's how he teaches us, and it all gets, it all kind of trickles down the totem pole, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. It's, uh, it's so, you know, we hear this over and over again about the things that RDT did and how you all treat each other and that you really are a family. And you don't find that in many employers. I've worked for a lot of employers, and, and once in a while you do find it, and when you do find it, it's a special thing, and usually it's the smaller employers. Exactly, and you know what? They keep, I see the news, and you know people keep calling us the Market Basket family, and honestly, the customers are part of that family. Yes, yes. You know? And you see it. You go into a store on Saturdays, and it's, good morning, Sean. How are you, Sean? And you know, I, I have my Saturday customers that I look forward to seeing. And you know, when you don't see them, and... You know, you don't see them. You get nervous sometimes. And, you know, you listen to their stories because everybody has a story. And this is what we do. It's like it's like when bartenders say or, you know, hairdressers say that they're therapists. We're just as much of a therapist as they are, you know? Absolutely. But, um, yeah. I have a question right for now? you, Sean. I... The stores, the morale in the store is 
very weird right now. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, I work in store three in Wilmington, Massachusetts, and um, it's starting to it's starting to thin out. Our product our products out back are pretty much depleted now, and it's how it's going to be for the next couple for the next week at least. I'm assuming. It's going to be interesting to see what really does happen over this next week. I think you guys are going to win this. And Valerie Malta has a question as well for you, Sean. I'm just curious. I have talked to a few employees of Mar- Market Basket, and you said you've been there six years. The people that are around you, the other employees that you work with, what do you think the average length of time that they've been there is? Because most of the people I've talked to have been there 15, 20 years. Can you hear her, Sean? I'm here, yep. No, can you hear Valerie's can question? Hear, yeah. No, I can't hear Oh, that's no. what it is. Okay. That's what it was. Okay. Oh, so that's she's, weird. she might not be on the phone, but maybe on the recording. Valerie asked, um, you know, you've been there quite a long time for a young guy. And yeah, yeah. the other employees, how how many years do you find that the average employee has been there? I think was the um, question. It depends on who, obviously. Um, <clears throat> I know people in my store, it could range from obviously one year, because it, you know, it says in the name tag, one year to. I think the highest in my store is in the 50s, I think. Mm. Um, And she's been there forever, and she still goes strong. Um, We have 30 years. My boss, I think he's coming up on Mm. 24 years. My assistant manager, I work in the meat department. Um, My assistant manager, I believe, is at 15 or 16 years. Um, But you you don't just go into this company and expect to not have a career. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me, I'm in school right now. I, I go to college, um, and I still don't know. I'm very indecisive. I'm not sure what I want to do. I may stay at Market Basket for all I know. Um, but right now, I'm not sure. And it, I don't think if I worked anywhere else, I would be thinking like that. Yeah. But there's there's certain reasons I think like that. And up until last year, I had I was pretty sure that I wanted to stay with Market Basket. But after all this stuff started, and Mr. Demo was wasn't possibly not going to be a, you know was not going to be a factor anymore. I started to change my mind a little bit, and that's tells you something. I mean, come on, you go into Walmart, right? Go, I dare you to go up to any of those part-time workers and ask them if they've ever met their CEO. What are they going to say? They're going to say no. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I've met Mr. Demoulas three or four times, and honestly, he remembered me from the first time. And I'm just a part-time worker. You know, he remembered me. He. Asked, he asks about your family. He asks if you need anything. He asks if you're comfortable. He asks me about school. He didn't, not that he didn't care about work, but there were things that he knew were important to me. You know what I mean? Yes. And things like that are what sets him apart from everybody else. And these new people, Gooch and Felicia, they, they, they just blowing smoke up our rear ends. You know what I mean? Like, they write these letters to the Globe, and they're not supportive at all. That was a terrible yeah. letter. Terrible. And I didn't. I, even, I yeah. only read parts of it. But Me too. Everybody at work Blame the talking. employees. Yeah. Well, that's that quote. That quote going after the employees. One last question: Do you think everyone at the at Market Basket? It seems to me from the management and the uh, uh, the management all across the board, to you know, besides these CEOs and besides this uh, board of directors, but the actual management of the company, the warehouse workers, the deli workers, the front-end workers, it seems like everyone's united. The produce workers, is, is that correct? Do you, do you feel that way, that everyone's united, that wants... Yep. And you left out a group of people, the customers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We all want Arthur T. back, right? Exactly. The customers come up to me all day, t- last night and today. I only worked four hours shift last night. It was kind of a last-minute thing. I worked four hours last night, and I probably... Before I left, I probably had at least 32 customers come up to me and talk to me about this last night. Uh, I felt like a secretary. All I did was answer questions last night. And same thing with today. All day today, we answered questions. These customers care, you know. And they, if these people went into Walmart, they don't even know. They don't even know the employees. They could care less. But you know what? They come to Market Basket for a reason, and he's part of that reason, you know, because he's the culture of this company. Thank you. Know? And, it's just how it goes. These people care about him, and you don't. They don't care about the CEO of Stop and Shop or Walmart or any of these places. But they care about our CEO, and so do we. And honestly, there's probably a very select few people in our company right now that don't care. You know, but everyone from baggers to um, top supervisors in the company, you know, Mr. Schmidt, Mr. Gordon, they all care. You know, and we're all united. I mean. 
if you've seen videos or if you've seen you've heard clips from the rally yesterday, everybody everybody had their voice in it, you know? And it wasn't it wasn't just these top executives in the company talking down to us or anything. It's not how this works. It's we're all in this together and hopefully we're gonna get through on top, you know? Awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. Yeah, anytime. You're listening to WEMF Radio. I know a lot of first-time listeners, I'm looking at the numbers. We got a lot of listeners today. First time, this is the Young Jerk Show. Please like us on Facebook. Uh, Smoking in the Girls' Room is coming up next. Some of the Smoking in the Girls' Room crew is already mm-hmm. here. My name is Mike Can. I'm the host of the show, The Young Jerks. And uh, we have also sitting in host... Carmelita. Carmelita from Bay State Rock on AAF. Yeah. Smoking in the Girls' and Room smoking, after. yeah. And uh, Valerie Malter is here. Hi, it's, I don't think the mic is on. Yes, it is. Oh, I, I, I think can it hear is. you. Oh, yeah. yay, it's yeah, on. Yeah. Hi. And uh, how do I say your name, miss? Gabrielle Agachico. Oh, Agachico. Mi- every time Gabrielle is on mic, her mic isn't on. <laughs> I, it's, do it again, Gabrielle. Gabrielle Agachico. There you go. Yay. And the phone number is 617-500-7100. Dave, did we play that clip earlier from the Walmart? We did, okay. So we did get that clip in earlier. We have been playing some clips from Walmart. I mean, I'm saying from Walmart. Walmart. What am I saying? That's he was, they're the he worst. Was, he was saying Walmart earlier. Market basket employees Market basket. have have very much higher stand. They're treated yeah, better. Way better. Uh, there's no comparison, exactly. and they know it, and we know it, and we love Market Basket. I do not shop at Walmart. Yeah. I do, however, until this all of this all of this happened. Uh, we've always shopped. My family's always shopped at Market Basket. Mm-hmm. It's just the best market, and the employees are amazing. And this past week. We have learned why. Yes. yes there yes, have been we have. people in that store that I've seen there for years and years yes. and years, and you don't stay with a job like that unless you're being treated really well. Right. I live in you Tuxbury, know, so the headquarters is there, so I don't have any choice but Market Basket, and it's the best place to shop, the best prices, and their employees are happy. I've, I know friends that work there, and they're happy employees. Yeah, and that's what's so uh, upsetting to see in this is that the new CEOs, they don't seem to care about that at all. They're just ignoring it. It's like you have such an opportunity right now. Only an idiot could screw this up. Yeah. I and that's what these two owners they're puppets. Well they're seeing the it as the directors they're seeing it as the joke. standard of yeah. what's going on today, which is the whole Ponzi scheme. Yeah. Treat your employees yeah. like dirt, skim everything off the top. But they don't have to do that. The they can the be ground. heroes on this and, and, and do the right thing. Like you have such an opportunity if you just be a bigger man, Arthur Estimolis. Be a bigger man. You could be a hero right now if you did the right thing. And set aside the boys. hatred yeah. and the greed. Yeah. Let's see you do it. And and uh, we've had a lot of calls today. It's uh, the phone number, if people don't know, it's 617-500-7100. I want you to call. This is the Young Jerk Show. We're about to wind down, actually. But if anyone wants to call in real quick before we leave, definitely do so. Coming up next... Smoking in the girls' room. We're going to continue this conversation. So for anybody that's tuned in right now from Market Basket, in support of Market Basket, author T, author S, anybody that is involved in this, we are going to be continuing the conversation. We are going to bring this right into Smoking on the Girls' Room. We're going to take a little break. We're going to play some music after after the Young Jerk show. But we are definitely coming back, and we do have some clips from the rallies as well that we're going to open our show up with, including a a song that might make everybody in the midst of this distress from Market Basket crack a smile a little bit. Hopefully, because that's what we need, and we need to stay strong as customers and as employees. Keep doing what you're doing, because I'm telling you, it makes a difference. You're being noticed by nationally, locally, everywhere. We're spending our whole shows on this. We scrap everything for you, Market Basket, today, the employees. So, and thank yeah. you, WMF Radio. Yeah, 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 we love Market Basket. Yeah, we love you guys. We support you and get your voices uh, over the airwaves. And also, uh, I did get some Facebook messages and some emails from uh, Market Basket employees who are afraid. Yes, so maybe and we can we, read some of those. Well, and, you know, we don't. You all, I also wanted to mention you don't have to say your if you want to say another name exactly. and or, don't or say. even another store number that you're calling in from or another city feel free to do 
that we protect your privacy right. here on WEMF Radio, and we totally respect and understand. But it is time to stand up, so you do have to call and you do have to stand up today. So definitely do it. You have passion. I can hear the calls. People, you know, I know sometimes people are afraid to call in and nervous and they have speech impediments. But look at me. I have a speech impediment. I host a show <laughs> because I speak with passion. And that's what you can speak on today because I know you work there. You have strong views on this. We want to hear from yes. you. So we'll take a break and uh, we'll call this an end to the Young Jerk Show. Definitely check us out on Facebook if you were listening today for the first time. It's uh, Facebook.com slash the young jerks and then uh, we'll come back and it'll be a new show it'll be uh, Kamalita's crew leading all the women and Mike's going to be joining us from the young jerks Mike C you'll, you'll be with us the yes. show so oh, we're awesome. our first guy that we're actually going to have sit it, in because testosterone in the room yeah. we have some testosterone <laughs> yeah, but we are <laughs> we're a little short our host this week but not only that Mike is very passionate about this issue as uh, are all of us yes and um he shared his show with us and we're going to share our show and we're going to turn off our phones <laughs> and that was my phone okay all right it's off all right carmelita so why don't we go because uh i gotta take a break i got i got i gotta hit i gotta i gotta walk around or something all i've right. been getting too worked up here <laughs> we are uh, the young jerks we're gonna say goodbye <laughs> we'll be back next week 6 p.m and we'll be a lot of us will be right back in a minute with a new show Smoking in the girls' room on WEMFRadio.com.